Theorem 10.11, if a tangent and a chord intersect at a point on the circle, then the measure of each angle formed is one half the measure of the intercepted arc. Make sure that the vertex is on the circle and that the line is tangent to the circle. So in the first example, you have a circle and you have an inscribed angle that's 50 degrees. So that makes the arc that it intercepts equal to 100 degrees. Then all the arcs in a circle need to add up to 360. So 360 minus 120 equals 100, or minus 100 equals 140. Since that arc is 140, half of that is 70 degrees, so x is 70. Next example, you have 58 degree angle. So the intercepted arc is 116, double that angle. All the arcs in a circle need to add up to 360. So that arc up there is going to be 100 degrees, and angle B is going to be half of that arc, so it's 50. Angle A is also an inscribed angle on that 100 degree arc, so it's going to be half of 100, which is 50 also. The next example, we have an angle 5x that's going to be half of the arc, which is 9x plus 20. So your equation is 5x equals 1 half times 9x plus 20. Then you want to multiply both sides by 2. So 10x equals 9x plus 20. Subtract 9x from both sides, and x equals 20. CBD is 5 times x, so it's 5 times 20. That's 100 degrees. The next theorem says that if you have two chords that intersect inside the circle, then the measure of each angle is one half the sum of the measures of the intercepted arcs. So if you're looking at the circle on the right, angle 1 is going to be equal to one half the sum of DC and AB. And you'll see this here in magenta. Angle two would be equal to one half the sum of the other intercepted arcs, AD and BC, which you see here in the gold color. Now let's look at an example. We have an angle x in the middle, and the intercepted arcs are 20 and 140. So x is 1 half 20 plus 140. So x is 1 half times 60, that means x is equal to 80. On the next example, we're looking for y, but we can't find y yet because we don't have intercepted arcs for y. So let's look at an angle next to it. Let's call it x. x is going to be equal to 1 half the intercepted arc, so 1 half 170 plus 60, which is 1 half 330, 230. So x is equal to 115 degrees. Now x and y are a linear pair. So that means that y is going to be 180 minus 115, so that's 65 degrees. The last example on this page, um, the x is actually the arc on the outside. So just be careful that when you're doing this problem, you follow the equation. 
So the angle in the middle, 70, is equal to 1 half the sum of the two arcs, x and 39 degrees. To solve this, multiply both sides by 2. So 140 equals x plus 39. And then subtract 39 from both sides. So x is equal to 101 degrees. All right, the other theorem that we have is when the intersection of the two secant lines is outside the circle. If it's outside the circle, then the equation uses the difference instead of the sum. So if it's inside the circle, it's the sum. If it's outside the circle, it's the difference divided by 2. So you see three different examples at the top of the page of how this might look. Notice that the arcs don't need to be touching each other, but they can. So the first problem, we have the angle outside the circle, and it's going to be equal to the difference between the two arcs. But the two arcs aren't shown, so we have to find the other arc before we can go on. Do 360 minus 104 minus 87. And you'll get that that arc is equal to 169 degrees. So now we can set up our formula. X is 1 half the difference between 169 and 87. So x is equal to 1 half 169 minus 87. That's 1 half times 82, which is going to give you 41. So that angle out there is 41 degrees. The next problem is a similar situation in the beginning. We need to find the missing arc. So 360 minus 142 gives you 218. So x is going to be 1 half the difference between those two arcs. So x is going to be 1 half 218 minus 142. When you plug that in your calculator, you get 1 half times 76, and that is equal to 38. On this problem, you need to find the missing arc. 360 is what all the arcs on a circle need to add up to. So that arc right up there is going to be 27 degrees. So x is going to be equal to 1 half the difference of 81 and 27. 81 minus 27 is equal to 54. So x is going to be equal to 1 half of 54. 1 half times 54 is 27 degrees also. If you're asking if that's going to always happen, that the angle outside is the same, no, this was just a coincidence in that case. The final problem on this page has the arc as the unknown. So don't get confused and accidentally do x equals first. Remember, it's the angle outside, so 49 degrees, is equal to 1 half the difference in the arc, so 185 minus x. Now you're going to solve this for x like you would an algebra problem. Multiply both sides by 2, so 98 equals 185 minus x. Then add x to both sides and subtract 
98. X is equal to 87 degrees. Those are the notes.